Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with ThomasHenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question comes in from a user and it's talking more around, you know, data engineer careers and it's specifically asking, are data engineers recession-proof careers? And so um, I thought this was a great question to be able to ask. Obviously, if we're coming to this channel, probably the tiniest bit biased. Okay, totally biased probably, but I'm really trying to put some data behind the uh, question and answer and just to kind of really fill out, you know, where I'm not just saying, hey, you know, because I'm a data engineer, I think it's going to last forever. Uh, I don't think that's the case, but I do think there are some tips and some things that we can talk about and I'll address in the end of the video here around how you can make sure that you're, you know, making yourself um, indispensable as a data engineer and future career career paths. But let's dig into the question. Let's talk about, you know, why I think that, you know, data engineers are semi recession proof and why I think it's a viable career for at least the next 10 years. All right. So specifically, let's talk about what the skills are for a data engineer. If you've been following this channel, you know, we've talked about, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different skills that you can use for it. So from SQL to Java, Python, Scala, um, skills, you know, around the Hadoop ecosystem, being able to implement some of those tools or AWS or Azure or even the Google Cloud Platform, right? There's a lot of tools that are in that big data, data engineering ecosystem. Linux is another key point too. So we're talking about having all these different skills. Um, and then we have some kind of understanding around data pipelines, right? Like how to take data from one system to another system or to bring it into an environment where you can run SQL on it or Java or Python or even build out models. So having an understanding of machine learning and deep learning models and how to implement those, right? Maybe not being an expert like our friends over on the data science side, but we've interacted with them and we have a special skill set of knowledge there. Those are some highly developed skills and those are also some highly sought after skills too. So that's another you know key point where I'm thinking, hey, you know, from a recession perspective, yes, you know, companies are going to fail. Yes, you know, whenever when, whenever there's an economic crisis, there's, you know, a, a pullback in investment and shrinking and, you know, maybe even layoffs. So I'm not saying the data engineers aren't going to be susceptible to those, but I think that you will be able to, you know, especially if you're building your skills and, and working on them, those are going to be highly sought after skills and you should be able to roll into different positions or find other projects. So why do I think data engineers are somewhat recession proof why well, I think it's a viable career for the next you know five to ten years um, I, I really went out and tried to find some outside data so that it's not just about hey Thomas is in his own little bubble right talking about data engineers so um, I went to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and I really couldn't find anything specific to data engineers saying hey you know data engineers this is the growth rate for it but I went back talked about some of the skills that we were just talking about and I feel like software engineers really closely relate to it and so if we just looked at software engineers, so from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is US based, software engineer outlook is about a 24% growth rate <laughs> over the next 10 years. So skills like that. So even if data engineering went away, thinking about the skills that we were just talking about, being able to develop, being able to use SQL, Java, Python, um, and implement those and also having Linux skills. I tell you right now, man, if you've got any kind of Linux skills, there are definitely positions out there for you. So, you know, I kind of went there and found some data to kind of back that up. I mean, a 24% job job growth rate, that's that's pretty that's pretty insane, right? Like when we look at our GDP and we look at maybe even some of the other career options, we're probably looking at under, you know, any, anything, anything at five to 10% is pretty good, right? So 24% is a pretty high growth rate, right? And then you know, like I said, we couldn't even break into the subset of what data engineers are. Um, the next one too is, so you've heard me talk about it a good bit on this channel. So IDC put out some growth numbers. I've looked at them. We talked about them on a live session I had here. So I just want to reiterate those points. Their prediction at the end of 2018 was that we were at 33 zettabytes worldwide in data. So if you don't know what a zettabyte is, one zettabyte is a billion petabytes. So that's a ton of data, right? And, you know, it's data all around the world too. They think by 2025, though, we will be at 175 zettabytes of data. Whoa, what is that? So that's a lot of data. So what does that have to do with recession-proof data engineers? Data is not going to stop growing. And being able to take advantage and use data, once again, talking about building those pipelines or implementing machine learning and deep learning uh, frameworks, I think that, I think it's going to be a viable thing, right? Now, we're not we're, we're not just collecting this data just so that we can stare at it, right? We want to be able to bring value out of it. And one of the reasons that we're collecting more and more data is because we know we can. And who's on the forefront of that? Data engineers. So that's 
the outside statistics of why I think data engineers are a recession-proof career. Now let's find out how we can market ourselves and build ourselves up so that we are indispensable as data engineers, right? Because you don't want to just be like a mediocre or below average data engineer, right? Because I mean, when, when, when things get tough, those, those may be the roles that go away, right? Those are, those are the people that are scrambling to, to find a career, right? You want to thrive as a data engineer. So what can you do? Number one, I think you've guessed it. You can learn more. You can learn more within your field. So if you're a Spark developer and you're continuing to learn all about Spark, you can continue to learn new things. You can get involved. You can see what's coming, what's coming down new in Spark. But also something you can do is you can learn about some new frameworks and new techniques and new technologies outside of that Spark area, right? You've seen me talk about it a good bit on this channel for 2019. What I'm doing is I'm paying attention to what's going on from the Hadoop and Spark and ecosystem. And I'm seeing how it's coming over and mapping to frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch and Cafe2. So I'm watching those different things. And by learning that, I'm learning new skill sets, right? I'm making myself more valuable in my career and I'm making myself more valuable to you, the community. So think about how you can continue to learn, continue to take that time. I've talked about it before. Set aside 30 minutes a day, maybe set aside 30 minutes a day, three times a week. I mean, think about that. That's an hour and a half of extra learning that you're doing on your own that's going to make you a better you know, data engineer, software engineer, whatever your career path is. Number two, this one's a huge, you've heard me talk about it before, but get involved in the community, right? Be a voice in the community. That, you know, can be as simple as joining, you know, one of the distribution lists for your favorite open source framework. So if you're in the Spark community, if you're in Flume, if you're in TensorFlow, get on the get on the distri distribution list, right? You don't have to be a contributor just to be, be a part of that. You can be a contributor from the perspective of, hey, maybe you answer user questions. You can help people out, right? Maybe you're maybe you're only two two to four months ahead of some of the some of the newer people, but you still have a lot of knowledge that you can give out. So that's a way to get involved. Also, you know, building a blog, getting involved, writing blog posts, whether it be just on LinkedIn, whether it be on your own site, and then creating videos, content, other things like that that show that you're a part of the community and it helps you you know, keep shoes on task to learn, right? Because we're talking about, hey, at least learning, you know, an hour and a half a week, 90 minutes a week. So you've got an opportunity there to take some of that content and take some of the things that you're learning, write a blog post, shoot a video, and just, you know, put a tweet out there, right? So just get involved in that community. That will help make you rise in the community, build your brand around it, and make you a better data engineer so that when recessions happen, when companies go down, you're still viable and you still have those skills. Well, that's all I have today for Big Data Big Questions. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. If you have any comments, maybe you didn't like this video, let me know. Maybe you loved the video, definitely let me know. Um, but I'll see you again next time on Big Data Big Questions.